Mental illness equals weak, or mental illness equals ugly or bad. I would use drugs, alcohol, people, food to like just numb it out. Yeah, it got muddy. Hi, my name is Becca Brown, and I am a person living with bipolar 2. I am an actor, a musician, a writer. I do comedy. I've been performing since I was a little kid. One of the just best things about my life is that I get to get on stage or in front of a camera and, and play a character, or even be myself. Uh, <laughs> When I was in middle school, I would get these like bouts of just existential dread and sadness and terror and wanting to isolate, wanting to be alone. But since I was in school, I didn't have that option and I would just really feel in it and didn't really have the words to explain what that was. But then that matched with like anxiety and like little spurts of like rage and at times just a day or two in a row of feeling amazing. The first time I felt mania, I, I felt hyper and I felt energized and like just ready to go. And it sometimes feels like you've just had like a lot of caffeine and it's not fun. Sometimes in a manic episode, I would just like decide to clean my entire house, rearrange the furniture, stay up all night writing something. And then the next day I would like look at all the things that I wrote and be like, none of that makes sense. None of it is good. There's a common stereotype that like when a bipolar person is in their like mania like it's it's like their fun side it might look fun but it's actually just really exhausting and, and impulsive and you're like why can't I stop and then the crash just shortly after that every person's depression looks different for me it's just isolation despair and sometimes paired with agoraphobia like i don't want to be around other people i don't want to go outside you know the only time i'll get out of bed is to like go use the bathroom self-sabotage just thinking terrible things i really just like felt these feelings um but like couldn't really talk about them because it just wasn't something that we talked about in our family Nobody talks about it because I think that there's this internalized stigma of like mental illness equals weak or mental illness equals ugly or bad. A lot of people in my family dealt with mental illness on both my mom and my dad's side. My mom, I think, struggles with depression for sure. And I remember just when she was in it, my dad would say something along the lines of, she's in one of her moods, just leave her alone. And that was kind of how we dealt with her mental illness. So when I started to think that I might have similar patterns to my mom, like I just wanted to keep it on the down low. And um, I would use drugs, alcohol, people, food to like just numb it out and just try to be like, everything's fine. Look at how hard I'm working and look at this relationship I'm in and look at how fun I am. There's no way I'm going through anything dark or bad. But eventually that caught up with me and it became harder and harder to fight that and to numb it out. I hit a pretty low emotional bottom and um, when I was 19, I, I tried to commit suicide. I was hospitalized for a couple of days and my dad told my sisters that I had a stomach ulcer to protect them from knowing the truth. Even though everyone, I think, kind of knew the truth. And I think that like lying and pretending and manipulation is kind of what triggers it even more and like makes it even harder to like be open about this stuff. Over the course of college till when I was about 25, uh, it got pretty dark. And eventually after just like knowing there was something wrong with me for so long, I reached out, I asked for help. And in the winter of 2017, I went to a psychiatrist. They suggested that I might be bipolar, but they wouldn't be able to really diagnose it if I was continually using drugs and alcohol. So I stopped drinking and using drugs and a couple months later they were able to diagnose me with bipolar 2. The difference between bipolar 1 and bipolar 2 
It's determined by what the mania looks like. For somebody with bipolar one, the mania is much more intense, longer periods. For bipolar two, it's called hypomania, where it's a shorter period of mania. But we do still have the very high highs and the very low lows. But uh, thank God I have therapy for that. <laughs> I see a therapist regularly and then every once in a while I'll see a psychiatrist to talk about my medication, to discuss whether I need to go up or stay where I'm at, just to keep everything regular. Not numb, not perfect, but manageable. <laughs> when I first got diagnosed, I thought like, how am I going to be a good artist without all this stuff that I like needed, I thought I needed to be funny. I thought I needed to be depressed all the time to write good comedy. I thought I needed to be wild and have crazy experiences and, and go on these like drug benders and like, you know, sexually impulsive sprees to write good material. But um, the material I've written now since getting sober and has been so much better than the stuff before. I like actually sometimes will like listen to old sets of my stand-up from before and like I kind of feel bad for <laughs> me three years ago who was just like obviously screaming for help but like didn't know how in a healthy way. Today, living with bipolar 2 is much more manageable because I know I have it and I know what to do when I start feeling the symptoms, when I start feeling the mania. Maybe I need to meditate or when I'm starting to feel depressed, maybe I need to step outside or go on a hike or go for a long walk with my partner. So it, it's, it's not perfect, it's not all sunshine and roses and, and rainbows but I don't want to kill myself, and for me, that's like manageable. <laughs> that's huge for me. So if you think you're bipolar, if you know you're bipolar, if you know you have any mental illness or you think you might have a mental illness, you're not alone. There are a lot of us. There are resources out there. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I know it's awkward to ask for help, but you know, sometimes that's all it takes to like feel a sense of relief. I ask for help every day. There are people that are out there that are willing to give you help. Having a mental illness is not ugly. It's not a sign of weakness. And just know that you're never, ever alone. <laughs>